Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I want to be talking a little bit about walling in Feudal Age and how we can use walls to secure the resources we need to have a better Feudal Age and potentially even winning in Feudal Age without having to think too much about base defense and just focusing more on the offense part and what your opponent is doing. We're going to be taking a look at a game from the best of 11. Some of you guys might have heard that we played, uh, Myriad and I. We went 6-2 in my favor and one of the games we played is Jeanne versus French and this is kind of a, a similar mirror to the French mirror and the reason that is is because you have these feudal knights and the feudal knights are so weird to play around because not all civs have them and so what we're trying to figure out is when do we start adding out other units when do we add spearmen archers horsemen when do we stick to feudal knights and one of the key features of playing French is actually something that most people don't know, which is usually the longer the Feudal Age goes for you, the better. When you play a Civ that has Knights, your scalability is really, really good. When you're up against somebody who's in Castle, it's great because you have these Knights that can really beat up Man at Arms and smaller amounts of Knights as well. On top of that, if you're then walling a little bit like in Age of Empires 2, where you get these early walls going, when you're playing Night Mirrors, you're not going to struggle so much against raids and whatnot. We're going to be starting off here with a pretty simple build. And the build is the same one that's uh, portrayed in my channel. And basically what we're going to try to do here is go for a defensive scouting route first. A lot of the times when we play in these French Mirrors, people will open two scouts. Because they want to limit the amount of food you have. So that you are quicker out on resources like deer and berries and boar. We want to stay a little bit more in our base until we're full wall before we start moving out on the resources. That is very, very important. If you go out too early, you might be hit by those early knights. So you actually want to play these games where it's very knight heavy, feudal age, civs. You want to play them more defensively because if you go too aggressive, not only will your opponent have more knights because you are on their part of the map, you will also be more vulnerable whilst you're setting up. So the most important thing to remember when playing these mirrors is get walled, play defensive, and then when you are when your opponent's sort of looking for attacks or you're both playing passive, you can start to walk around and check their pocket resources. If you've got a lot of sheep, they will be out early on those. If you have a lot of sheep, you will not be able to do damage early on. So we're aging up and we're gonna be up here at about 340. We're gonna go for early nights. And then what we're going to do after that is we're going to start to collect wood with five villagers. What we're looking for is to figure out what is the best path for us in terms of walling. We want to figure out where are our resources. So always analyze your spawn when you're sort of playing the Dark Age. There's not a lot to do here besides scouting. And you want to figure out what info do you have about your spawn? How is the game going to go for you? Are all your resources in the front or only in the back? Go to the sides. Are there wood lines around it that can make it so that the walling part is a little bit easier? So... If we take a look at the spawn here, we can see that the deer have spawned in the back, which is very fortunate. Then we have double berry spawn in the front, which can be a little bit annoying. We have deers to the left and a berry spawn to the left as well. And then one boar to the right. For our opponent, however, and we don't see this yet, but we can take a look at the spawn for our opponent too, because it's, he's essentially playing the, the same sieve. He has a double deer spawn here. And berries. And this is very, very important to understand that when you are looking at the spawn of your opponent and you're sort of visualizing how the game's going to go, if you're going to play a Feudal Age game and you're going to force that Feudal Age fight, you will now see that, okay, when your opponent's going to transition out on these resources, these deer are going to be together. So your opponent's guaranteed to be here for a very long amount of time. So if you can deny this, that's great because you have now denied pretty much. 50-60% of all their food on their map. On the other side, we have berries and boar, and this is obviously also really important resources, but nothing is as major as a double deer spawn accompanied by berries and as well the second gold. So this is a, a pretty bad spawn. It's projected forward the resources. That means that the economy and the pocket resources will be here as well. So these are very uh, apt uh, positions for you to raid, essentially. Switch back to our scout's vision here. Speed up by 2x. We are gathering gold, we're gathering food, and we're going to go to wood. We're going to start walling, as I mentioned. And then we're just going to check a look at our opponent's base. We want to figure out, do they have a front spawning gold or not? If they have a front spawning gold, you can try, if you have the timing for it, and your opponent ages up a little bit later, to go and try to hit that gold with a knight. 
But a lot of the times, people are aware that you're going to try to get that knight out early, so you actually want to maybe not reveal it. And in the case of playing against JD, you might want to try to find out, is she going on boar to try to get experience? And that is a potential snipe possibility. Here we see our gold, uh, our opponent's gold is in the back together with the food. So there's a very good star to spawn because it's really, really hard for me to rate this. There's a long distance and there will be knights out before I can actually get there, which means it's easier for him to defend. He's also building a tower. Now, what we want to try to avoid when we play um, French mirrors and just in general, these knight heavy uh, matchups is towers, bad walls and uh, early spearmen and archers and stuff. Because these slow us down, and it's important to understand that if you have more knights, you can micro. If you have fewer knights, you lack mobility. And these are essential components when playing these matchups. So an early tower like this is half a knight, almost. And that's important to understand that, yes, whilst it does give you that defense, it does not give you the room to move. It only protects the gold. Had he used the same amount of resources walling, so let's say... He spent maybe 50 wood here, right? That's uh, essentially the same cost, almost. Maybe this would be 140 or 30 wood for this entire section to be walled. That's almost the same. And it's going to give you a lot more value because you're protecting so many more resources. Generally speaking, you only want to have towers in the front and walls the sides and the back. And that's because you want to get the vision in the front. Is your opponent coming or not? And the walls are going to protect your side, so you don't have to be putting military in positions you don't want to. This tower here is a little bit unnecessary, because he could have put a knight here and that would have been fine. Again, we need to play defensive first, then offensive. Alright. Here, we're doing a quick wall. We're just setting up the left side here, so we can go safely to the deer after. And then we're going to do another wall over here, so that the entire backside is essentially safe. So that's the way we start off with our walls. We have a little bit more gold now. We have this constant knight production. And notice how the knights here are not going aggro. They're just playing defensive. Because I know my opponent's going to look for something like a, a, a quick attack. In the meantime, we are monitoring the boar. We see that the boar is being pulled. And we've placed a knight here. And we didn't go for the gold because we know that there was a tower. So there was no point in going for it. We're up against a good player. We know that they will be aware of this. So instead what you're going to do is you're just going to go and camp the boar if you're up against JD. And this can be a very good opportunity to get that early value to take out JD. And that is exactly what you want. It's such a big tempo loss for him. But pay attention to my knight. It's now almost half health. And that means this knight here, had it been the same knight that went under gold, for example, and took damage, I would now have a half health knight. And it takes time before I get my chivalry upgrade to heal it up. So these early fights, you actually don't want to lose health. You want to keep your knights, keep playing defensive, and then secure the resources on the map. You don't want to go aggressive and then secure your resources by going aggressive. It's actually the opposite here. We want to play defensive, secure our resources, and then we can go aggressive. Now we're checking the deer. Of course, you can also check the deer through the fog of war by just doing like this, selecting, are there seven deers? Then you know that there are no opponents here. There are no villages gathering. Of course, this is not something you can do if you're playing Roost French or something like that, because the deer will be dead. All right, coming around the back line now, we can see that our opponent went for spears, which is a really good sign because it means that there's going to be fewer knights and more spears. And this is also a go for us to go and say, OK, we can add archers. And we don't want to add too many archers. We still want to get more knights. But archers as a counter unit is really good when you're playing French because spears, generally speaking, are better for defending. You don't really want to use them in fights unless you're in a fight where you know you can get value from them by having a lot of them or taking out the archers or so on. Try to just keep things simple, keep things centered around the walling and the knights, and then you're going to be absolutely fine here. We can see our opponent here went for a little bit of a push on the walls, and we have more knights here than he's able to attack with. Part of the reason for that is we have um, the defender's advantage, which, mean, which means every time we're making knights, we will have, if the opponent has the same amount of knights, we will always have more knights in our base, provided we haven't lost any, than our opponent will be able to attack with. And the reason for that is there will always be knights moving across the field or in defensive positions. So this is really good. It's a little bit of night micro here. There's some low health uh, knights from our opponents, so this is not like a bad fight for us to take. 
a couple of spearmen is also not very dangerous. But generally speaking, we want to avoid this until we have a few archers so that we can better um, deal with this threat of the spearmen. Again, as I mentioned before, spearmen can be good, but only if you know you can get value from them. So if you can counter them with five archers or something, which would two-shot them, that would be great. Again, we want to focus on getting the knights. They can be micro to a, a, a very like great extent, which means you just want to not have like 40 archers in this matchup. You want to have the opposite. You want to have 40 knights if you can get that. All right. So he's doing the right thing. He's playing defensive, and this is something you need to do here. He's playing around the boar, so we know that later on he's going to go here once this boar is out. So once this boar is essentially done, and you can take a look at it always, click on the boar, how many resources are left in the boar, then you can sort of determine when they're going to go to the other side, and you can just sort of time that with your archer mass, so you know that you have enough archers for that point in the game, so that you can one-shot the spears should you go to that right side, and then that's going to be a good timing for you in terms of army. All right, so the count for knights right now is 16 knights to 9 knights right now, and 14 spears. Our opponent is looking to go pretty aggressive here, but pay attention, we have the archer mass we need, and we just start taking shots now. These fights here are actually not bad for you. You might give JD some experience, but if you win this fight, then you are tremendously ahead, and JD being halfway to level 3 doesn't really matter, because now you have leverage to do whatever you want to. Taking a fight like this, where spearmen just essentially find no value and your opponent just has fewer knights because of that same reason, what you can essentially do is you can now go for chivalry. You can now go for your upgrades. This is one of those small tempo advantages that we've been looking for. Actually, it's a rather big tempo advantage. It's very important, because all these upgrades that we might have been skipping out on, um, the military upgrades, the chivalry coming through up here now, these upgrades here, well, you were not going to essentially get them before this because you would be losing out on knights but having taken away so much army from the opponent allows you now to do a castellation allows you to do chivalry allows you to get the blacksmith upgrades and that's just so important to understand that now you have the freedom to move around the map and go aggressive because now you took that fight you were looking for your opponent got impatient you had the walls up so you didn't take the damage and now you can just move out look for the damage you want we check through the fog of war here we see that our opponent kill these deer and when the deers are being killed we also know that our opponents here most likely with an army but as i said we just took out a lot of army as well so we're just going to try to see if we can pounce on the villagers that are here you can do a couple things here you can try to lure your enemy away with a few knights give them the impression that you're trying to look for a raid and then you come with a counter raid so double raiding essentially splitting their units another thing you can do is also just wait for them to move away now that can be an impatient opponent that does that. You can also wait for something like an age up to come through. So we're going castle right now because of that massive tempo advantage we have. That tempo advantage will also force your opponent to look for more damage. Here we can see our opponent went out, which means this area here, there might be spearmen, but we have so many knights that it's super easy for us to find the damage that we need to find. So here we kill right about eight villages which is a massive lead, like this essentially seals the entire game because we've been getting extra villagers by playing as French, right? We have now killed eight villagers as well. So on top of that, we now have so much leads. We have military lead, we have a tech lead, and we have an eco lead as well. So this is how you capitalize off of that. Our opponent, our opponent has a lot of knights now. We just got cast rage. And while we're trying to get gold enough for royal bloodlines, we just want to get veterancy first. We want to get veteran C on our archers. We want to get veteran C on our knights. Royal Bloodlines takes a minute and a half. And it's really, really long. Most people will try to fight you before you will ever be able to get that upgrade. So essentially, you want to just get your veteran C, get the extra 20% value from your units. And then just try to take a fight once you reach that point. We took a... JD out here, and taking JD out here means that taking this fight is actually really good for us because we won't be feeding experience. We go for some charges here, a little, a few little hits here, and then we're just waiting for our archers to come around as well. We want the archers to be able to one-shot these spearmen because we've got critical mass on them as well. All right, so now the spearmen go down. We have our archers targeting the different spears, as you can see. They've been shift-clicked to single target. 
If you want to know more about Archer Micro, check out my previous video, which talks about Archers, and it is just such a good unit to have for this fight, because this fight would not go well without the Archers. So you essentially, in 1v1s, can't go full Knights, you have to get Archers, because this fight here would probably have been dead even without them. So now we again have a military lead, we have a tech lead, and now we're going to start taking relics as well. And we've been raiding in the back as well too. Alright, now Bloodlines comes through, and we're going to try to get Bloodlines just to make sure our knights keep scaling. The thing with Bloodlines is there's no point in waiting. Don't wait for upgrades if you have a tempo lead or a military lead. Capitalize off of it immediately. It's just good for you that you also have the upgrades coming through. Alright. Opponent here has still all the food over here. We know this. We know that there's no food any other place for him. And he doesn't want to go for farms. So the game is sealed here. We take so many uh, villages out. And when you have Castle Age Knights, you two-shot bills. So it's just such a good position to be in. We're still making archers as well because the main threat will still be the spearmen. And essentially the game is over here. Again, it's back to the power of walling. The power of walling allowing you to go for more knights, fewer spears and archers. Remember that next time you play a matchup like this where there's a lot of feudal knights. Remember to wall. Don't go into spearmen and archers as the first player. Do that as a counter. So when your opponent goes for spears, you go for archers. If your opponent goes for a second stable, you can go for a second stable if you have French knights, but if you don't, you might want to go into spears. So just think about these things when you are playing these matchups. And um, yeah, good luck. I hope this video helped you. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, have a good day.